I'm Julia Cordova. Thank you so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel and liking my videos. I really appreciate it. Last week was awesome. So what I had expected to happen was I had expected ES to close or SPX futures to close down a little bit. And I had also expected gold to, to close down a little bit as well. This is a really good example of, you know, if, if anybody actually knew what was going to happen, um, they wouldn't be doing YouTube videos. But also, it's no one knows what's going to happen. I mean, the reality is, you you have in your mind a scenario, and and you have very good levels to play off of. And so, what ended up happening was on Sunday night slash Monday, um, ES took a tumble, and we were so lucky that we bought in at exactly support, and actually ended up doing really well. I hope that you um, followed me on Twitter and you saw that I did that. I mean, it was nerve wracking. I didn't want to buy, like, you know, I wanted to be bearish, but the reality is I thought we were just going down too, too much too fast. And then as far as the gold trade goes, that one, yay. So for this week, I know, I'm just gonna say it again. I, I see, I could change my mind, so, watch this space for the space on Twitter. But I think that um, there's a good bearish setup ah, again in the indices. So we'll look at that. You can tell me what you think. I'm not always right. Um, but you know, I'll tell you a good setup of what I think would be um, a good way to play it either way. And we'll go from there. Also, I have to tell you, I went to go and look at my charts over the weekend and review them and um, all of my uh, SPX futures and NQ charts had just been erased. All of the lines were completely gone. So I did my very best to recreate them. And in the process of recreating them, I found something interesting. So I'll share that with you. But they're not completely done yet. But that's okay because we're going to do this. Ready? All right. Okay. All right. Let me make my. Okay. So uh, this is my new and improved. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Anyway, it's my new ES chart. It's very similar to the last one. The so last week we came down here and hit exactamundo where we needed to. I'm pretty pleased with myself. We did good. We did really good, especially because I bought the F out of it. Just because I did think it was too much too soon. It was right on that support. I mean, look, I mean, I was, I was very lucky to do that. Okay, now let me just, just pivot here so we know. Okay, now the bottom of the channel has changed a little bit. All right, so there we go. All right, close enough. Um, anyway. This was the only line that was here last week. And if you remember a couple weeks back, I said, guys, I changed the slope of this line. I said, it's no big whoop because originally it was the same slope as these two. And I said, I think it'll serve us better in the long run. Okay, I, I really am really proud of myself because it, it served us really well. But on top of that, so when I was recreating the chart, I was like, well, how good is this new slope that I created? Because when I was looking at it, I was real proud of myself. Originally, I was like, oh, I think, even though it doesn't look great right now, I think it'll help us. So I went back and I took the same slope of what we caught last week and I applied it to the top. Um, well, I didn't apply it to the top. Here, here. Well, here's what I did. Look, I put it here. So basically I applied it to the top of this last peak and it, and it worked there and it worked here. And what do you know? It's very close to where we already are. So Originally, I didn't actually see any resistance until um, the top of this channel, which, I mean, I don't know if this is exactly right or not. I had to redo this. I mean, it's about, it's about 45, 50 or so. I didn't see a lot of resistance until then. Now I see this. And also, if you look at RSI, again, these lines might be different. I don't know. We'll find out. But anyway, if you look at RSI, you can see that, again, we're at resistance on RSI. And we are at resistance uh, close to, not at, but close to resistance in price. Now, this candle does not look bearish. This chart does not look bearish, okay? So it could go either way. So what I'm looking to, to, to play is I'm looking for a little bit of, a, of an upwards move here, in which case if it comes back down, I will short it. Uh, or if it gets below 4380, which has been a, a really good level for us, I will look to short it there. The opposite play of that, one that is very valid, is if it starts to go down first and if it holds 4380 and then it gets above this 4422, that might be a really good long opportunity. 
I'm not gonna take it, but it might be. It's possible. All right, so now I'm gonna, the way that I did this, and I don't know if I'm gonna keep this or not, but I ha now I have the weekly here and I have the daily here, and I couldn't figure out a way, maybe you know, with Trading View, to make this chart that's on the uh, right-hand side, is that right? Yeah, right-hand side, um, bigger, taking over. I mean, I know how to get this one to take over, but I don't know how to, anyway, it doesn't matter. So from a daily perspective, um, I did not draw on these lines yet. Sorry, I've I'm, I'm been stressed out. Anyway, um, we are right now above this last, uh, what was resistance is now support at 4388 or so. So um, 4390 ish, 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 ish. So from a daily perspective, that might be a pivot to watch. You know, if, if on Sunday slash Monday, we get below that, uh, and then look for this previous um, measured move at 4356-ish um, to hold or not to hold. I don't foresee it crashing. I'm not talking about like boom, boom, it's possible, but I, I'm i just talking about potentially playing a pullback here. Um, on the opposite side of the fence here, you could take a long here with a stop at this level and play it that way. I am still long in my investment accounts. However, I think I am going to scale out a bit on Monday. And I'm gonna do something weird. And y'all, I mean, I know I committed a chart crime here by kind of putting this line here after the fact, but not really because like, can I just, look how good it is. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit another chart crime and that is just by showing you a view Vixie chart. Now, if you are, new to investing or you don't know you know much about it you're just you know kind of playing the game let me just advise against buying ubixi because look at this long-term chart it just for the most part goes down okay like it just goes down so it's extremely risky i would not advise it but here's why i wanted to show it to you it reverse splits all the frick time. I mean, I think it started out like a billion and now it's like $28. Um, last week, it was a, it was not a, even, it was not a huge range of Uvixie in terms of like crazy Uvixie weeks, right? We've had a lot bigger here, here, you know, here, like lots of different ranges, but the volume was pretty large. So I find that, I just found that interesting. I asked somebody smart what they thought that that meant and they said, well, I could make a case either way. Uh, anyway, I found it interesting. I would be interested in what you think about that. Were people buying it as a hedge because they think we're going to explode upwards, the market will explode upwards? Were they buying it because they think that there is some volatility ahead? And then I looked at previous candles that sort of, you know, when we start, when Uvixi started to sort of round out a little bit, like here, um, it looked like potentially when you have such a top tail here going, a top wick, it looks like potentially it gets sort of above the previous range. Not always, but potentially, which is another reason I'm kind of like, well, you know, I kind of like it here. And I, I already did scale in a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, so we'll see what happens, but I would advise against it. Okay, if you're somebody that's not into pain or um, stuff like that. All right, let's look at uh, NASDAQ. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna talk about the weekly and the daily here to save time because I'm also gonna tell you about a trade that I took that I lost because I think it's valuable to everybody or at least to me to talk about uh, how I screwed this, how I, I mean, I told you how great I did buying the freaking dip in, S, in ES, but I'll tell you something I screwed up later and well, for NASDAQ, okay. Anywho, these are the pivots that I'm watching for this week. Um, and remember too, a couple weeks ago, I think here, I said I wasn't too bearish ES yet because NASDAQ still had a bit to go before my measured move. Okay, but now we're really close. So the pivots I'm looking at for NASDAQ on a weekly basis are 15209-ish. I think it was 15208 before, but I recalculated it. Um, and then the bottom of this channel holding would be 15052. Okay, so below 15052, it's gonna start to look like ruh -roh. Okay, but above 209, then is it a breakout of the measured move? I don't know, but I I personally am just, I'm, I'm hoping for volatility. Now, um, on a huge level, like huge, 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 I am actually not uh, 
bearish at all yet because we have this other measured move that we've gotten nowhere close to yet, which was 17,803. I don't know if it'll get there or not. I just delivered the pivots. But anyway, um, for now, this next measured move ends at 15,209. So that's where I will, if it goes above and then gets back below, that's where I'll be like, oh, okay, you know what? That's that's uh, bearish, okay? Um, now, from a daily perspective, I just didn't have time to draw on all the lines. I was trying so hard to get the exact same slopes, but it's impossible because the data on investing.com is super crappy, but awesome. And I, anyway, I wasn't able to do it. But for now, I have these slopes drawn in and I see the next daily resistance Sunday night slash Monday as 15212. Okay, now let me go over a trade that I took earlier. Um, so one of my pivots last week was uh, for the NASDAQ was 14.840. And in my investment accounts, I went super de ooper de long uh, TQQQ, which is a leverage QQQ product that as long as it's, as long as, so these leverage products, as long as price isn't chopping around too much and it's going in a, you know, a straight line, a, Ish, a straight ish line up or down these leverage products can be amazing however in general they are not meant to hold overnight they're meant to just kind of scalp daily over maybe one overnight you know that kind of thing but they lose value on a day-to-day -day basis so it unless it's something where you have a, 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 a real trend going going um, it's not a great thing to hold but because it was such a drop I just went I went a little bit, you know, um, what's the opposite of ballsy? Eggsy? I went eggsy on um, ovary-ish. I don't know. I, I went full ovaries on TQQQ um, at the pretty much the lows on Monday. So yay. Um, and anyway, uh, on my futures account, 840 was, um, 14840 was one of my resistance halls. And um, when I look at I'm just going to show you this on chart. I took the, I took the short um, a little bit early, just somewhere, I think, uh, eight, eight, three, eight, somewhere like that. I'm not sure about that. Um, it's after I had a picture of margaritas. So I have that as an excuse, but anyway, um, yay for me, because obviously this was an important level. When we look at it on the hourly time frame. even though it was a weekly pivot, you can see, wow, you know, we really got some traction there. Um, but we went above it and I was still like, that's okay. Cause you know, I thought maybe fakey breaky. And then I got green again. I was like, all right, all right. And then we went way above it and I started to get like a little antsy, you know? And then when we flashed below it here, I was like, oh, um, fakey breaky, oh, um, fakey breaky. Because it just did seem like, I mean, we went up a lot already from these lows, uh, but that is not actually what happened. So I ended up taking a loss right around here, okay? Which is no bueno. And maybe I could have gotten out of it later and I started to get like pissy at myself when it went back here. But the reality is, after this, um, you know, my personal view is if, if when I take a loss like this, um, where I didn't really have to take it, but I just didn't set that trail. I just, I had confidence in it, but it turns out instead of what I expected to have happen, hmm, expectations versus reality, I expected it to go down. Maybe, you know, make some kind of inverse head and shouldersy thing like this, you know what I mean? And then I was gonna, especially when it went up past it, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh right? I mean, this was a level and I thought maybe it'll do this, but it, but no. Uh, anyway, what I expected to have happen was I expected it to hit resistance, go down and then come back up. And instead it went past resistance, went back down to test it as support and then went back up. So I just wanted to share that. I did not manage that trade particularly well, but I thought it was good to share. Okay. Let's look at Bitcoin. Okay, so Bitcoin's had um, a, a great um, few days here, five days. I mean, it's like, wow. I mean, it's impressive, right? Because I've been talking bearish about it because um, it looks bearish. Um, yeah, it still looks bearish. It looks, <laughs> um, it to me, it still looks bearish to me. I'm sorry, but it, you know, I mean, if you're just, uh, if you're scalping it or whatever, maybe I need to look at smaller time frames. but on the, in the bigger picture, it still looks bearish, but I could be wrong. And if it gets back above um, 36,000 or so, closes back above there, I will super reconsider this position. Maybe I'm not, maybe, maybe it'll do the thing, right? 
But for me, um, if you you know, if folks are talking about maybe a double bottom here, for me, uh, generally speaking, double bottoms are more, they have more of a defined middle than this is. I don't know. I just don't like it. Night right now. Uh it could, I could be wrong, but I'm still bearish at this time. Um, but I'm not really involved in it. So it's, you know, in a way it's unbiased, right? Let's look at Ethereum. Okay, so Ethereum uh, is right at resistance right now. I have resistance as 2190 and it is at 2159 or so after the daily high of... 2182. So it's it's gotten very close to resistance. We'll have to see what happens from here. If Ethereum closes above this resistance, then yeah, okay. Well, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe it'll go um, way up here. And then if it gets to this line, it'll be above this kind of notch in the middle, right? And that'll start to look a lot more bullish to me. However, um, mm, Triple bottom, not a bottom right there. So I think that. Triple bottom, not a bottom. I thought this was, I remember I was like, these are a little bit lower, so maybe it's not technically, but this one's right there. However, it is support until it is broken. So there's that. Okay, uh, now let's look at GDX. Oh boy, all right. So next week could be, next week is a fed week right so we're going to get a rate decision so next week could move metals and gdx potentially quite a bit i didn't want it to close below this blue line because um this blue line is support it doesn't mean by the way look at this it can get back above these lines are not perfect there's not we're not it's not perfection that we're looking for it's just a, a way to get an edge over the market so it's possible that we get above this line and for this um, warped head and shoulders to play out, this really is the very last week it has. So here's, here's what my plan is for GDX. I don't have any holding right now. Um, well, not any active, like I don't know what I have way in the IRA stuff, but I don't know. But um, I don't have any active positions right now that I know about. So my plan this week is if we close above this line, then I think that will be bullish. And then I would set a stop for this line next week um, or for it to close next week above, uh, you know, above this line. Otherwise, if it gets down into this key area again, remember I talked about the potential for a huge W. Um, I'm going to I'm going to try it here. So it's like I'm either going to buy it low here if it gets in this area or I'm going to buy it higher here and just be like, well, that's okay. Because there is still a gap here at 41.42 that needs filling. I don't know when it'll get filled. It might get filled in 2050, okay? But um, it, it's enough of, you know, if it goes down here, I'll, I'll buy it. And if it, if it closes up here, I'll buy it. That's my plan. It may change. I may focus on other things, but that's my plan. All right, now let's look at gold. All right, we did have a down week in gold last week, um, which I thought would happen. The good news is that it bounced right off of this key line last week, almost to perfection, 1788.9. Okay, so, so far, you know, it was like, it was like, um, you know, I always picture one of those wooden roller coasters, like, and it's just like, you know, that's good, you know, especially after it goes down so fast and like when it doesn't go fast enough back up, you're like, oh no. However, we have not dropped here yet. So um, I still think gold is okay as long as it holds this week above 1784.2. And I actually am feeling a little bit like it might surprise people and go up right now. I am, that is just my gut feeling. I do not know. I am going to trade level to level like always, but it just feels like maybe it might surprise people. Um, but I don't know, and I might not actively trade it because I, you know, it's going to be a crazy week. I don't really want to get caught one direction or another. It would be okay with me if it went down again. I don't know. I mean, that'd be fine. Let's look at silver. Okay, um, so I did draw in uh, a new line here, this blue line, because I think I see 
and I drew in this shape here, this triangle, I think I just see just consolidation happening and this looks bullish to me. Silver looks bullish overall still, even though it's way down, it still looks bullish to me, which pleases me because I'm hodling my silver in my investment account. Hodl, 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 hodl. I, you know, if it gets, if silver closes below, I'm gonna give you a number. If silver closes below, I'll put this thing. It can go back down, but if it closes below 2486 this week, then I'm gonna be sad. I think that'll, I mean, it, you know, it, that's the bottom of the triangle. We already hit the bottom of the triangle this week. Look how perfectly, triangle, triangle, triangle. I mean, you know, it can it can do this deal, right? So it's the close that matters. But right now, I'm, I mean, it can really do this deal. Sure it can, we'll have to see. But for now, um, even though it looks poopy, it's still okay longer term. It's not bullish, bullish, like, you know, like, okay, I'm gonna add kind of thing unless it gets, unless it, you know, if it gets to a point where it looks yucky, I'll add. Or if it gets to a point where it's starting to look delicious, I will add. And right now, it's neither of those two things. But uh, potentially, maybe this week, we'll get a little bit of a lift. So, you know, all right, I don't know. All right, let's talk about oil. Okay, now we were also very lucky. We called the bottom in ES, and we also called close to the bottom in oil. And then we went right back into this channel. Wow. Wow. Yay. I mean, I took some profit <laughs> because I was not expect. I mean, I was like, I don't know, but I still have a scale in, so we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, okay. Well, the next resistance in oil from from this formation is at seventy three and change, seventy three oh four ish, 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 ish. So if um, we're able to break out above seventy three oh four then I, I mean, even now, that's a really bullish looking candle. It doesn't mean it can't do something weird right afterwards, right? But chances are when there's a bullish looking candle like this uh, for either continuation or chop, usually, okay? I mean, I don't expect it to just poop after that, right? Like continuation or chop, and chop could be anything from, you know, it could be any one of these candles, but um, I wouldn't, yeah, it looks, it's in the channel. It's in the middle of the channel right now, um, sort of towards the top, and we'll see how it treats 7304 if we get there, um, and we'll go from there. Now, from an equity perspective, uh, XOP, um, you know, this is interesting because it, it closed right underneath this this channel. So even though it it also got you know got green again, it closed a little bit lower than the oil look, oil closed a little bit higher than the previous week just a touch not much but you know if you're, if you're just kind of not looking at these wicks uh, it closed a little bit higher but the equities closed just a touch lower so usually you would have seen I would have thought that you'd see the equities if this were a sustained move they're going to be a sustained move um, into the next week uh, I would have expected the equities to close back within here. So interesting. It's in it's at sort of a pivot place. I don't know. But I'm watching 83 for XOP next week. Let's see what happens. And then um, you know, what I'm not gonna like though is if it starts to drop again, and if it gets to the 7209, um, you know, it's gonna start to look like it might do a, a head and shoulders deal. So hopefully it'll get back in the channel if you have if you have these stocks, hopefully it'll get back in the channel and then just continue onwards. But I mean, it could do this, right? Where it closed right here and then it gapped up and I mean, that's possible. So 83 is the pivot to watch for next week, in my opinion. Below it is bearish, above it is bullish. Okay, let's talk about Natty. Oh, okay, so my, uh, I had, I uh, okay, I did really good last week overall um because i've been long natty and because natty has just been on fire uh we did though close the week at resistance um so i had said that resistance was between uh 404 and 407 um and this is actually wrong it's, it didn't close at 406 i know that because i was messing with it 
Um, it closed at about 4045. That's that seems more right. So uh, so far we bounced right off of this resistance, but there is a very like not a huge tail or wick on this candle. So it's still looking bullish. However, it is at resistance. So I'm uh, I took some profit. I mean, it could it could gap up huge. I saw two Nathans chasing each other in my office today. I don't know if one cancels out the other. Oh, look, it just opened. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Anyway, um, oh, oh, that was exciting. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, I got rid of some of my position because it's at resist it's at resistance, and uh, yeah. So that's where we're at right now, 404. Oh, this is so exciting. Okay, I gotta, I gotta trade. Okay, uh, it, okay, okay. Um, and then Joe, another huge winner this week. Um, huge winner. I was very confident about it. I probably should have said something in the beginning of the video, but I didn't because um, maybe I'm forcing people to watch it. I don't know. Anyway, um, I am going to buy every dip off of Joe. It would be my dream to have Joe come back and test this line, okay? But um, I, I don't want a fakey breaky because it did close above this channel. So I, ideally, 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 it will close to next week above 53.7. Oh, sorry. Make that higher. 53.83, ideally. Um, um, I think, it, and if it can do that, we met our, our stretch goal. Remember I had created a new stretch goal at this pink line of 54.84. We met that. Uh, we still closed above this previous. Above this 52.07, I like it. Even though, you know, it might have a tail back here, I like it. I like it a lot. And ideally, it will close the week above 53.83 for continuance and go parabolic. That would be ideal, 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 ideal. Okay, that's it. I'm making myself back. I really appreciate you guys tuning in every week. I, I do. And so, anyway, thank you so much for your support, and I will see you on the interwebs. Okay, bye.